Hello dreamers and welcome to Disney Dream Life Valley. Yesterday was a results day and as usual I've seen a lot of people who got uh, very good results. Some people got uh, much lower results than they expected. And I just thought what are some some steps that you can follow that could potentially improve your chances of getting good results in Dream Snaps. And I thought about it long and hard. I've looked at a bunch of the top submissions of all times. And I've also analyzed my own uh, process and I decided to make this video. Five steps that in my opinion, if you follow all of them in this particular order, you are going to increase your chances to get 4,000 Moonstones in your Dream Snaps. It's not guaranteed to work. There is still lots of randomness in Dream Snaps, but I think, I think it doesn't hurt to give this a try and see if it helps your future result, especially if you've been stuck getting 900 moonstones or less i think these tips could be pretty helpful so if you if you enjoying this kind of content the sub to the channel would be amazing and also don't forget to click that like button let's get straight into it also feel free to let me know in the comments if you agree or disagree with certain uh steps here and if you have your own steps that you usually follow when you do dream snaps so to, in order to demonstrate the whole process, I'm going to create a dream snap. Uh, I'm not going to use any specific theme that we already had. I'm just going to come up with my own theme. And uh, you all know I love Eric so much. So let's build a dream snap for the theme and a date with Eric. All right. So for the first step, I think it's essential to do before you even start building your dream snap is figure out three things. Number one, location. Number two, lighting. Number three, angle. These three things are super important and very difficult to change once you've already started building your dream snap. All right, let's start with location. I, I feel like me and Eric could have really good time in Oasis. So let's let's go there. Let's go there and see what's going on. I I like how uh, it has like a nice. Uh, Nice peaceful vibe. Could be a nice natural date. I really like the way this fountain, uh, this waterfall looks. So I think this is going to be my location. Uh, now, the next step is going to be lightning, lighting. And uh, I have to decide basically between day shot and nine shot and see what, what kind of lighting you can even get in a chosen location. If I'm going for the day shot, I need to make sure that the angle of my shot is going to be facing... Uh, I, I, my character is going to be facing the sun as directly as possible. You can tell it easily by uh, the shadow. As you can see, I need to be standing like this. And the shot needs to be like this in order for uh, the sun to be hitting me in the face. If you are making a day shot, it's absolutely essential to make sure that the light hits you in the face as directly as possible because it's gonna make your colors pop so much compare this angle and how how vibrant everything looks versus this angle where you do have a nice waterfall behind you but the character itself it just doesn't look as nice and bright compared to this it's gonna help you stand out so much more if you have proper lighting illuminating your character if you can't get direct sunlight and you are absolutely sold on a certain angle. For example, in this case, you absolutely want to have this waterfall in the background of your shot. What you can try doing, you can go to settings and try playing with the time of day. Uh, go a couple hours earlier, a couple hours later. And see if you can make it uh, that the sun is hitting you at least slightly in the face. Now, I actually can... I actually can't make it hit me in the face. Look at this. This looks absolutely f fantastic. There is a little bit too much shadow from all of these trees and uh, the clouds. L let me remove all of the objects that could potentially cast shadow on my character. Okay, I think this is perfect. We have direct sunlight. We have waterfall. The col colors look super beautiful. I think this is going to be a great date with Eric. So now I have a location. I have an angle. I also highly recommend figuring out the filter before you start building. So you can just go into your camera mode and see uh, if any of the filters look good. You can make like a... Oh! Moana. Hello there. 
just see what works with the shot. I really like how this filter looks in this shot. I feel like I might actually go for this filter. Why it's important to pick a filter right away is because you need to make sure that the lighting, you know exactly how the lighting in your shot is going to look in your final product. So if, for example, you wanted to take a shot, uh, for example, this was the ideal angle. You, you want to have a sunset shot with sun behind you. You would probably, you could probably benefit from the filter in this particular shot just because the sun is not hitting you in the face. Not always, but uh, it, it could be an option. So you, you could just try different options. Ooh, this looks really good. I could probably go for this filter. So I highly recommend you trying to figure out your lighting, the final version of your lighting before you even start building as step one. Okay, so I, uh, I made a decision. I'm making the shot at this angle in this location without any filters because I can get a really good uh, light on my character and on Eric. Now we're moving to step number two. Step number two of proof of concept. You have, you know where you want your dream snap to happen, but there is also a factor of what exactly your dream snap is going to be. And it's very difficult to uh, build your whole thing just to realize in the end it just doesn't work. So you have to start over. So I highly recommend choosing a few items that are going to be the basis of your shot. And this goes for both outfit challenge and uh, decoration challenge. Because decor is also important in outfit challenge. Even though it's to the lesser degree, but it's still very important. So let's say what items me and Eric absolutely must have on a date. Since it's a date, I think I'm going to go for the date night exterior table. This item just looks good anywhere. And uh, I, I think it's going to work pretty well here. I want to create some romantic atmosphere using lighting items are going to be very, very uh, powerful. They create a nice, uh, like you create bright spots on your shots, helping it to be more noticeable. The light, uh, the, the light sources are even more important if you're going for a darker shot, but even in the bright shots, the light, it just can't hurt. I also very like the idea of a date under gazebo, so let's find that. And I really like the way the hammock tree looks in the background, so I think it's going to be also prominent in my shot. So by using only the main items, like as, as you can see, I'm not focusing on details. I'm focusing on like the bones of the shot. I'm not going too deep into, in, into the details and I'm just trying to figure out how the main items will look in my composition. This will give me an idea if the shot that I have in mind will even work in this particular location or if it even will work in general and actually look good. Okay, I think there is definitely potential. This looks like a nice spot. It has nice lightning, nice nice lighting. Uh, I, I, I do want to uh, change a few items around a little bit, but I think I think the concept is clear. So this, this looks good. Now all it just needs is a little bit of polish. So now we can move to step number three. We are actually gonna work on the main composition and the outfit, which is also very important for either challenge. Um, let's see, uh, normally I would go, obviously, try to get as many tags as I can while maintaining the vibe. Here I'm not going to worry about tags, let's just say it's a furniture challenge. I just want to make a nice dress. Uh, I mean, not make, I want to wear a nice dress that will go nicely with Eric. Uh, in the end, I ended up with this outfit. I feel like it's pretty casual and it looks good. Also, you want to make sure that your outfit is not going to blend with anything on your environment. So, uh, in this case, I, I guess my, my jacket kind of blends, but it's still I feel like it's still different enough that you'll be able to stand out. All right, now let's work on my composition. I want to organize these items in the proper way and also want to make sure that I have some extra items to uh, enhance the scene. Okay. I did uh, play around a little bit with the items and I feel like now we're at the stage where the photo is looking pretty good. Uh, I feel like for, for for a lot of people this would probably be the final stage where you have all of your items in the shot 
Uh, everything looks great, but we still have two more stages left. And these are the probably the most important when it comes... Well, not the most important, but these are... The last two stages, I feel like, is what separates a good submission from an amazing submission that has a potential to get 4,000 Moonstones. Ste step number four is going to be the details, the foreground, and the background. And uh, in this stage, basically, you need to make sure that all of the items are organized as perfectly as possible. Nothing looks out of place. Not nothing looks like it's, it's blocking something. Everything just looks good. And a few things that I would change is I would move this light a little bit to the right so it doesn't block... Uh, so, so it looks a little bit more symmetrical. Uh, I do have my foreground already. I decided to use this hammock as a foreground, which looks pretty good. Uh, there is some space here that I could fill up with something that looks good from far away that could make like a nice little background, uh, could, make, uh, could add more lights, make sure that stuff is more visible. I could add some uh, some details in the grass. This is the stage where you add potentially flowers, some rock clusters. Uh, the idea is to not to make the shot super cluttered, but you do want it to look a little bit uh, like you, you don't want to have an empty area in your shot that's going to draw people's attention or an area that just doesn't look right. So let's do a little bit of cleanup and add some details. Now we're talking. Now this looking good. And you might be thinking, okay, now the shot is perfect. It has absolutely everything it can possibly need. Except I don't know why is everybody and their mother decided to... Vi don't forget to banish everybody before you start. That's another tip. So what can this shot possibly need? Well, it needs the final step. And the final step is going to be final effects. And there is multiple things uh, that you can use as a final effect. Thing number one. Now, these flowers can create, if they're in, in proximity to you, by the way, if you're wondering how to get them, if you have Eternity Isle expansion, just just progress uh, through Rapunzel quest. Actually, this is these flowers, you find them before you even find the Rapunzel. So make sure to never sell them and use them in the effect. If you can see, I used it for my Moana submission. And they, they just create like this nice glow in the bottom of your screen, which looks absolutely phenomenal. Trick number two is using your orb pillar. And this is probably my favorite special effect of them all. If you align this properly, you can actually, your camera will go through the pillar. And you can position this orb, for example, on the top of the screen to create this beautiful rays. You can make it from the corner, you can make it from uh, from the top. You can use any color orb, so you can have blue lights, you can have purple lights, but my favorite one is the beach orb that gives you orange lights. It looks like a sun. It looks absolutely stunning. You can only use this in the valley. You cannot use this in Eternity Isle because there's no way to move the orbs there, but the flowers can be moved anywhere. Another cool trick is using butterflies from Mirabelle. I'm not going to show you the details because I'm not going to use butterflies for this shot. Actually, maybe I will. The trick with butterflies is actually pretty simple. All you need to do is you need to position Mirabelle in front of your shot. So all you need to do in order for this to work is lock Mirabelle up uh, at, at a certain distance from your shot. It needs to be a very specific distance. So the Mirabelle itself is not visible, but the butterflies are visible. And you have to be not hanging out with her. So now, look what happens. Uh, let's say this is my shot. And now, now she's playing butterflies, so I can, have, I can have these butterflies in my shot. If I wanted to. Well, I probably wanna, want, want her to be a little bit more to the left. Just like this. Perfect. So now, watch what happens when I exit the furniture mode. She starts to butterfly animation right away. So you can exit furniture mode and then align your shot and boom, snap it. And you have lots of beautiful butterflies. And if you missed it, if it ended, all you need to do is to just exit, go back into the furniture mode, then exit again. And boom, you got fresh butterflies. This is a nice little bug. Then you can utilize 
to get yourself some butterflies. You know what? I think I will get these butterflies for me and Eric's date. I think we deserve the best. And unfortunately, I cannot get both Mirabel and Eric right now because Mirabel is scheduled to be in the shop and Eric goes back to his house as soon as I stop hanging out with him. So instead, we're going to use a different trick. Okay, for this one, I'm just going to use Maui and I'm going to trap him right about where the camera is. Which is right here, so he can be uh, some nice... He can, he can add some nice sparkles into the shot because the characters do sparkle. And you can capture that sparkle in your shot. So I think this is a great place for him. So now let's just build rocks around him. Alright, Eric, are you ready for our date? Now the time has passed and now I need to bring... Uh, the uh the time back one hour there we go and we are ready to take our perfect shot and here it is our perfect date just me eric some romance and some maui on the background but we don't have to know about maui i'm not sure i like how my face is right in front of that candles Come on, Maui, give me some good sparkles. And... Not great. Decent sparkles. Gotta take a couple different shots until we get the most perfect sparkles. Can you stop moving, dude? Okay, you probably want to give Maui less space to move around so the sparkles are a little bit more consistent. Ah, great sparkles, but the eyes are closed. Yes! Yes, that's the one. Great sparkles, fantastic shots, everything is perfectly aligned. I would call our date a success, what do you guys think? So yeah, followed five stages. Once again, first, we're figuring out location, angle. I would add a pose into that one. I feel like it's important to decide from the very start if you're going to do a critter pose or if you're even going to have a critter. If you want to bring any, any characters, uh, I feel like that's, that's a good thing to decide before you even start building your composition. Then step number two uh, is to uh, make a proof of concept. Just make place the items that are going to be the main items in your shot. Something that you absolutely must have. And see if it works. If the whole shot composition looks good. Now in the third stage you make you iron out the outfit. And you add more items into the shot to complement. To build out the scene. Then in the stage four you work on details by uh, making sure you have foreground, you have background, there's no glaring empty spots in your shot. And on the stage uh, 5, you add some special effects, like uh, a bunch of sparkles, maybe some sun, sun rays using the orb, some butterflies, some glitter you can sprinkle around. There's a lot of tricks. I might actually make a whole separate video on uh, special effect tricks to polish out your dream snap. But these are the main ones. And actually, I'm I'm very happy with how this turned out. If we ever have uh, a dream snap to do a date with your favorite character, I already got myself one. Yeah, thank you so much for watching. That was, that was a lot of fun. Uh, this whole video took me uh, about an hour. So this dream snap took me about one hour. Plus all the talking and all the showing that I did. I think actual work was probably about 30 minutes. So it's not too bad to spend 30 minutes on a dream snap. Usually, usually I spend much longer. This one, I feel like I, I went for a little bit more simple shot. Let me know in the comments if this was helpful. And huge thanks to all of our supporters. Guys, don't forget to check out Dreamers Portal. We just got so many cool new features. And you can actually, if you're struggling to figure out what to even make for this week, we have a section on the Dreamers Portal where people can post their dream snaps and you can see already posted and finished dream snaps for the current theme so maybe uh, by seeing that it can inspire you and give you some cool ideas for your own dream snap for this week we have a lot of very very talented creators and i'm sure you're gonna find something that uh well don't just flat out copy it but maybe you can get a little idea from one dream snap a little idea from another dream snap and then combine it into your own dream snap thank you for watching Subscribe for more content, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.